That's better. <laughs> Feels good to make somebody's day like that. Ryan's Mobile One. Hey guys, what's up? If I had to guess, I'd say you've got a rope sucked into your personal watercraft. I'm not laughing at you, it's a sympathetic laugh because I've done the same thing myself and I've helped a number of people get out of the same situation. It's an optimistic laugh because you're just going to be okay. I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on how to get this thing corrected so you can get back out on the water and get playing. Here we go. If you look under the trailer of a jet ski or a wave runner, you don't see a prop or any reason why you shouldn't be able to run over a rope. So people do. You're gonna need some tools. There's different strategies for doing this. One is to take the grate off the bottom. In order to do that, you're gonna need some sockets, sometimes Allen sockets, that little hexagon, you know, L-shaped key thing. And a lot of them are either 12 millimeter or 13 millimeter. And you just pull those bolts off, get in there. And sometimes you can save the rope this way, but not always. So this protective grill gets in the way if you have ropes and things that are stuck in there. It makes it a lot harder to take the rope out. This is removable as long as the unit hasn't had things stripped out or other issues. This one has a lot of bolts in it. There's six in the back, two in the front. I've got most of them out already. I've just got two to hold it in to just kind of show you what it looks like. You can see there's just a lot of room in there. So if you had a rope all wrapped up in here to the point where it wouldn't rotate or if it was jamming it up, you could pull that out and instantly you've got access to all of this to where you can get your hand in there and then pull the rope, unravel it out and save it and it'll be great. On a Wave Runner it's pretty easy. On a Sea-Doo and uh, some of the other machines, uh, they've got a really skinny area and it can really bind up a rope fast, especially if it's thick. This, if, you, if the engine's running, then this is spinning. If you run over a rope and it sucks it in, it'll stop this. If this stops, the engine stops because there's a direct connection between the two. If you can't remove the grill, the best thing to do is to take a fillet knife, cut down to where it's on the edge of this, you know, just like a sharpening rod, and then cut like this along the rope. If you try to cut the rope here, you'll find that your knife gets dulled really quick and it takes a really long time and it's difficult to cut. It doesn't work very well, but if you go over the top of it like a tangent line on a circle, you'll find that you can cut the rope off really easily. If you can't get the grill off, your best bet's to cut the rope off. Generally, you're going to have to cut the rope and that leads us to the next tool you're going to need and that is a knife. Uh, the preferred knife for doing this is either something that's serrated and has a little bit of a curve to it so you can kind of saw through it or a fillet knife or something that's sharp and durable. Fishermen have fillet knives. Where there's water, there's fishermen. Ask a fisherman. Another tool that's really helpful, especially if you have a Sea-Doo brand where they have like that narrow pinch that really binds rope down hard, is a pry bar. You stick it in with the grate and just shove it to the end. We're going to actually demonstrate that in this video. We had vacation recently with that with the family at the lake and there were two Sea-Doo's that both got stuck and sucked in the same rope. So double header, right? <laughs> Stay tuned, it's pretty exciting. The other thing you need to do is you need to get the thing either on its side so that you have access to the bottom or you need to get it flipped over upside down. Either one will do. If you're out in the middle of the water, obviously you can't hold it sideways. On the shore, that's what we did because it was easy. We could prop them up to where you would just balance it basically. There's not a lot of weight to it. How do you get it upside down? I'm glad you asked. People dump these things over on a consistent basis. So much so that there's instructions on the back that tell you most of them you tip them over clockwise and then tip them right side up clockwise and then water doesn't get in the intake. Um, if you tip it over the wrong direction and look at the back there'll be an arrow. I can promise you that. They all have that. If you tip it the wrong way it gets full of water then you have to haul it to the shore and take the cylinder head off and then crank it over and then etc etc. It won't crank over when they're full of water because they call that hydro lock. Uh, another reason that it doesn't crank over is if you have a rope tied in it. Another reason is if there's wood or anything else. If you get it upside down climb onto the watercraft from the back. If you have three people then you can have people stabilize it on either side while you do that and that makes it easier. Uh, but let's show you how you get a thing undone. It won't come out. Another thing we can do is just cut it and just unwrap it through the hole. Sometimes the best you can do is use your fingers and on some watercraft that's enough. How tight it is, it's jammed up in there, that's what made it stop. So we're going to unravel this first. 
and then push it this way to where we can unwrap the rest of it. Got this one cleared out. The hardest part is where it narrows down in here. If you can get that cleared or push it into where it's loose, the rest isn't too bad. You can see the impeller in there, it's all clear, but there's a lot of little pieces. These pieces are on the beach now. We used a fillet knife to go across the top of the shaft and that's where these came from. Chris here, he's just about done. You see that part in the foremost? You can shove that to the back. That's where the battle's won. That's where it gets really compressed there in the impeller. But if you try to save the rope, you're just gonna, I mean, for one, you're fooling yourself, you're not gonna save the rope. <laughs> and uh, two, it'll just take forever and bind you up. So if you can get it cut and start to get it loose, nice. and before you know it, yes. this is what you've got. Ah. How much did you think you were on the hook for? Uh, two sea -Doo's. I was counting on 10 grand. And these are your sea <laughs> or somebody else? We rented them. Gotcha. Yeah, so... So what advice would you give to people renting sea -Doo's? Uh Know what you're doing. <laughs> I'm not even sure. I don't know what I don't know at this point. To be honest with you. It was at this point when he said that that I knew I was going to use the footage and make a video with all the information in this for share. See a need, fill a need, right? So Chris says, carry a pry bar and a fillet knife. <laughs> Not bad. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, you're good. That's better. There they go. Just like nothing happened. What do you think? I think they did too. Feels good to make somebody's day like that. Yeah. It was kind of a fun adventure. You never know what you're going to find out on the lake. You never know. <laughs> I get comments where people say, I'm subscribed, how come you haven't been putting out videos? If you don't ring that bell, they won't show them to you. You only see the clickbaity ones that I do and I have to. Bonus footage at the end. Watch this tire explode into the side of my truck. Feel free to take this opportunity to click on this video that I recently uploaded and see what I've been up to. Or you can click on this other video that Google and their algorithm thinks you want to watch. Thanks for clicking by. Hope it's worth your time.